भागवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Live from Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our daily reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam, yoga wisdom literature, focusing on this incredible book, the Srimad Bhagavatam, um, which is uh, the whole thing is designed for yoga teachers. Um, and for people who are just fans of yoga culture and want to add some spiritual GPS to their life to upgrade the quality of existence. Kostuba, good morning. Good morning, Brother Ness. I, I know this is completely, you know, me and Kostuba, we try to play it off where like we're really, you know, free wheel and just talking, just having a conversation, but everything is planned by the mastermind Mara down to the last. <laughs> <laughs> All my jokes, whatever I say is like, Mara's like, no, no, at 401, that's when you make that joke. That's when you pause. That's when you start singing Olivia Newton John. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, she berates us, what are you? You go off again, Raghu. No, just, just kidding. But I want to do something off schedule if Mara will let us. All because right. right before I signed on, I just saw an interesting email. Can I read it, Kasu? Well, what am I supposed to say now? Has Mara approved it? Would look of it? Awkward. it would look awkward <laughs> if you said no, but I just think it, it's something that I would like to, like, um, All right. to address. Um, this is from one of our, Lynn, Mc, Lynn McDougall. It's a good, oh, it's good Lynn McDougall. email. It's a question, but I didn't want to save it for question day because I thought it was very relevant. I have noticed that in Srila Prabhupada's writings, the word sin, if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is the uh, translator and commentator on the on the Srimad Bhagavatam version that we read. Mm -hmm. He is our guru's guru. So that's just like an introduction to who Srila Prabhupada is. He's no longer on the planet, living on the planet. But um, he wrote these books when he came over here in the 60s. So he says, I've noticed in Srila Prabhupada's writings, he used this word sin and, and derivations thereof, which are often used. Coming from a Judeo-Christian background, the concept of sin I was, fed from, I, I, I was fed from that religion was a dark and miserable thing that I was forced to embrace as, a, as in I was born a sinner who needed saving from my first breath. It took years to become deprogrammed from that damage. So when I run into this word throughout Prabhupada's writings, it makes my stomach to lurch a bit, that's a good word, my stomach lurched, uh, and my mind very tight. Can you please help me understand what Srila Prabhupada means when he refers to sin, sinners, sinful behavior, etc.? Thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions, and thank you all for what you do in service to all of us. With gratitude, Lynn McDougall. That would have been question. a great question for question answer. I don't know why you brought it out now. What's going on? You're, you're going All right, spontaneous. All right, forget it. <laughs> All right, forget it. Let's just do it later. <laughs> well, I wanted to hear, uh, I, want, I, I wanted to say what I say when people ask this question, right. and I wanted to hear what you say, actually, because we both approach things like this, and we both have different brains, and we approach it from different angles. I just say there's certain ways, just like if you uh, buy any vehicle, there are certain ways to drive that vehicle, you know? Um, we were we got our pickup truck caught in the mud yesterday. <laughs> we were falling, and there's what you can't just jam it into reverse. You've got to go slowly through, uh, uh, you know, through the gears on the on the. I'm not below this analogy. Anyway, there's certain ways to use whatever you purchase: a, a vehicle, a computer. Um, I'm blowing it. You, can't, you have to use it in order with, with those directions. If you use it out of those directions, you don't get the full effect and benefit from that thing you've purchased. So in the same sense, the body is like that. There's certain things that we can do that can just, that aren't healthy for the body, aren't healthy for the mind. 
Um, you know, there's prescribed ways that the, what we can eat. There's the prescribed ways for our, uh, for, um, in our thoughts. And when we, when we do them off the natural course, we get a, a, a terrible reaction. Just like if you eat too much pizza and Coca-Cola, you will get acid reflux. That's not a normal thing. It's the body trying to compensate for you going off track. That's what I say sin is, is when you go off what the normal track is for your health and your, uh, or the proper use of your body and mind. So um, I think, because Prabhupada was born in that, uh, you know, there was a big British influence in the schools and stuff like that. He'll pop back to these words like sin, or sometimes he'll translate the word um, dharma for religion. But sort of being in the age we, we, we are in right now, I retranslate those. Sin, I'll say something instead of sinful, I'll say, you know, going off track. Or when I see the word religion, I'll translate it back to Dharma. Because in the yoga community, we know what Dharma is more than we know what that how we, our concept of religion. Sometimes, like Lynn said, we have a very sour, lurch, stomach lurching feeling when we heard hear the word religion or sin. Hmm. How is that? Because how do you say that? How do you explain that? Um, well, before even getting into it, we what we have to do, you know, when we want, we're trying to get the truth. We're trying to get to some some knowledge that's going to help us understand reality and uh, knowledge has to be conveyed through language and language is something that um it what a particular you know what is language is just a, a, we make a sound that's meant to be connected to an idea and how sounds connect to ideas it shifts and it changes you know so like when someone hears the word sin based on how it's been presented to them in the past it, it will trigger some kind of feeling based on that sound. You know, there's certain, you know one identifies that, that word mm. with um, certain ideas and certain feelings. And then someone else may use that word, but they may mean to convey something else. Mm. And, and so what we really need to try to do is get to what was really trying to be conveyed. Um, and, and, so, and I see that's exactly what Lynn's doing here. You know, she's looking into it. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this word, it, you know, are there other ways to understand it? Is, is it meant to mean exactly what, what, what others meant it to mean when I heard it in my past? And, you know, so I, I appreciate that, um, that deeper kind of, um, that attempt to, to go deeper in, into understanding it. Now, yeah, one of the things that I appreciate about how Krishna consciousness, right, or bhakti was presented to me as a young man and what attracted to me to it Young man. Yeah. What is that? Some song you sing? <laughs> YMCA. Oh, young man. Right. It, was just, it, was, it was fun to hear yourself as a young man. <laughs> as a whippersnapper. Um, I was, um, you know, the, the concept, it was presented as a science. That's the way Prabhupada often likes to present it, right? But this is a science. So let's try to understand it as a science. Hmm. And, that, and that means that, you know, we're, that yoga means that, we're, that, the, that our mind is programmed in a certain way and we, we have to deal with that, that we have a true nature that lies underneath it, that's ultimately, you know, of the nature of pure love of God, and, you know, and, and that we need to uncover that and the mind's in the way. And so, the, so then, then you could say that actions that tend to um, reinforce that programming, that false programming, that illusion. Mm. We could call that sin, right? Like, you, it's um, you know, there's a word, there's there's a Sanskrit word, papam, right, wow. which is commonly translated as sin. Um, I'm no Sanskrit expert, and to really, if, you know, if I wanted to answer this question more in depth, I would go and I begin to, you know, I would inquire from some Sanskrit, um, some Sanskrit experts, you know, you know, can you share with me more about this word papam? But, but uh, you know, there's papam and there's punya, right? Punya means like that which brings on, you know, a positive result. And papam is that which is bringing in a negative result. Punya is bringing on some kind of pleasantness and papam is bringing in some kind of unpleasantness. Punya is bringing, the, you know, is going to help return us to, to the state that we're meant to go towards. And, Papam is going to kind of reinforce that illusion and deepen it. Um, 
So, but you know, if we go back, I think it was, was it last weekend? We, we dealt with that question about sex. Yep. And, and, um, and the idea being that, uh, you know, I think commonly in, in different types of religious forums, sex is spoken about as being sinful. Um, and then, you know, and with that comes all kinds of guilt, fear, um, condemnation, you know, et cetera. You know, you, you tie all these things to it. Whereas when you look at it more scientifically, it's, it, you know, it's kind of like, well, hey, if, if I can understand this very basic truth, you know, let's take some knowledge. If, 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 if the basic truth is that happiness is something that is my nature, in my illusory state, I'm, I, I'm seeking happiness through external things, all right? So I need to, and, and when I indulge in, in, in searching for happiness through external things, I begin to forget that it's my nature. But the problem is, is that the external things, they bring moments of what we call happiness that disintegrate, you know, that come and go like waves. They're followed by, um, you know, by, by, mo by depression or, or other, you know, and, and, and it's a back and forth kind of thing that becomes very dissatisfying and very, you know, problematic. So therefore, when I, when, when I indulge the senses in trying to find happiness, you know, through the senses, um, I'm, I'm operating in a way that's taking me further from my own nature. And sexuality is a very powerful way of doing that. And so let me try to not say like that by engaging in it, I, I'm like, you know, of the devil, I've been, you know, possessed by Satan, I've been, you know, it's not like that. But it's just that I'm becoming forgetful of my own true nature. And we want to come back to that reminder of it. That's a good one. Forgetful right. of my own true nature. Yeah. And, and so, you, so yeah, if you want to call, you know, define sin that way, you can say sin is you know, the forgetfulness of our own true nature or actions that deepen the forgetfulness of our own true nature. And um, whereas, you know, um, punya, you know, um, I don't know what would be the, what would be the opposite of sin in, you know, like in the English language, but, you know, action that, that, that leads to the uncovering of my true nature, you know, we mm. call that Dharma and, and what's not, we could call it, instead of Papam, we could say a Dharma. Right. So, so Prabhupada understands that and Prabhupada, you know, um, if, if we take the totality of his teachings, we can get that real clear. Mm. So then if he's going to use the word sin, let's try not to get, hung up on it let's let's try not to let that be a stumbling block and, and try to understand it more from that scientific or yogic let's say yogic kind of you, you know Kostub, by the way that was a beautiful answer um you. and you are beautiful if i may i don't know if anyone told you that this morning yet but you're a beautiful oh, man. thank you <laughs> <laughs> has anyone told you you're beautiful this morning <laughs> um i think it's important i think there's two types of listeners we have on the show one is sort of like people just zooming in or coming into the show and hearing about it and want to try to like, tell oh, that's a sort of a good takeaway. This stuff sounds interesting. And then there's people who actually, no, 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 this is my spiritual path. Yeah. And if you're one of those persons that you've opted in, like this is my spiritual path, it's important to read and study and hear these things and figure out expertly how to explain them for your audience. Because yeah. your audience may just not get, and, and um, certain things that were even spoken about 300 years ago, it may not, that, and the analogy used 300 years ago may not make sense. And so even, even in my own, you know, uh, study and teaching and stuff like that, I hear things, I try to, I, I sometimes come up with new analogies. I say, an old, I'll say an analogy from the Bhagavad Gita, I'll talk it through thousands of times, sometimes to myself. And then I'll present it to someone like my a friend, a Kostuba, or a teacher. I'll say, what do you think about this analogy? Do you think this one works? And then if I like it, I, I go with it. I, I tease it out more. <laughs> and then if I don't like it, I put it on the shelf. But I think it's important to, one, first hear how to hear it. And how does it make sense? Like Lynn's doing in this question. And the second way is um, start to own it yourself and how to disseminate it to your family members who are going to like, what sin? This is crazy. I mean, I grew up with this type of shame, but yeah, it's beautiful. We actually have, a, we're, this is a, a pure soul theology. We're actually pure 
We're just forgetful. I like putting it like that. We're pure beings. We just forgot what we are. And yoga is the process of waking up. You, you know, think about that, Mara? It's good. It's good. Um, okay. Mara, I apologize for losing the script today. <laughs> but we are we'll back up later, right now at four. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, Kastub. Yeah. Place here. Should we dive right into the Srimad Bhagavatam? Let's dive in. But when we dive in, I may want to take us a little bit off script, too. I haven't. I have so I want to. Well, I'm well, sorry, Mara. <laughs> Okay. Now that you started it, I, I want to take us off script too. Okay. Go ahead, let's chant. Um, the, these, we're going, first, we're going to start with on script with our, our secret mantras. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam datojayam mudiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto the um, Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sadaswati, the goddess of learning, and to Shri Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Priyeshva Badresu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service to the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnata Murandasya Ajnana Shalakya Chaksurun Militam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurveda Maha. So we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 15, text. Text are we on 24? Yep. No, we're, we're 36. past 20, 28. <laughs> Just throw a number out there, you know. Um, 36. We're on 30, 36. 36. But, but I, I want to take us off script because you know what, Robin? We skipped some commentary, some purports yesterday yeah. that were just like so good. Okay. Can we go back a little bit? Sure. What number? Well, I want to first look at, because, um, you know, actually I shared on our Instagram uh, page, yeah. by the way, and there's a plug for you right there, right? Check out our Instagram <laughs> but we try to share good stuff there and so uh yeah it's, it's worth you know following us there if you like so um i just somehow i don't i was just going over stuff that we didn't read you know commentaries that we didn't read yesterday and i came across you know like in the in the here's text uh 115 29 Arjuna's constant remembrance. I, I find this, these verses really interesting about Arjuna's state of consciousness at this point, right? It's where, you know, we hear the Bhagavad Gita and then at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, you know, Krishna says, so you've heard my message now, now do what you want with it. How are you feeling? You know, checking in with him. And Arjuna says, I've, I've heard what you said and my illusion has gone now, you know, and I'm prepared to carry out your order. And, um, and then here we see it's kind of like the completion of Arjuna. Now this is the very end of Arjuna's life we're coming to and the state of consciousness that he enters into. So it says, Arjuna's constant remembrance of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna rapidly increased his devotion. And as a result, all the trash in his thoughts subsided. And Prabhupada gives a real short commentary. But he says, material desires in the mind are the trash of material contamination. By such contamination, the living being is faced with so many compatible and incompatible things. Mm. You see, even here, like the, when Prabhupada uses the word trash, material contamination, it sounds kind of like um, almost that kind of religious kind of, yeah. you know. But, but I don't see it. I, I see it like from the yoga point of view. Material contamination means the files on my computer have kind of been corrupted by ideas that are working against my uncovering my true nature, right? He says, by such contamination, a living being is faced with so many compatible and incompatible things that discourage the very existence of spiritual identity, right? I'm, I'm given compatible, meaning pleasant, and incompatible, unpleasant things come my way that, that um, discourage the very existence of spiritual identity, that, that make it harder for me to identify myself as soul and make it more likely that I identify myself with body and mind, right? Yeah. So it, it's like science, right? But then he says, and this is, the, this is the, what I shared uh, on Instagram. 
birth after birth, the conditioned soul is entrapped with so many pleasing and displeasing elements, which are all false and temporary. Right? There's an eternal happiness that's our true nature, but we birth after birth, we've been entrapped. We're, we get trapped by the pleasant things and the unpleasant things. We search and we chase after the pleasant things. We run away. We try to avoid the unpleasant things. But all these are false. They have nothing. They're temporary. They come and they go. There's something eternal sitting there underneath that we're meant to uncover. So birth after birth, the conditioned soul is entrapped with so many pleasing and displeasing elements, which are all false and temporary. They accumulate due to our reactions to material desires. Right? Due to the way that we respond to our desires, we accumulate this karma and we get more pleasant and unpleasant things coming our way. But when we get in touch with the transcendental Lord in his variegated energies by devotional service, so when we get in touch with God in his variegated, variegated energies, when we see God in everything, right? Uh, then he says, the naked forms of all material desires become manifest. You see them for what they are, right? The, 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 the facade drops, right? The naked form. Then the naked form of all material desires becomes manifest. And the intelligence of the living being is pacified by its true color. Okay, Raghu, there's, there's your cue for the Cindy Lauper. <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so, but but that's the but that just those three sentences, two sentences. So much there, right? Like sometimes Prabhupada he can he can he can provide like just like this condensed realization in just a couple of sentences. I, I I just really like that that phrase. You know? That was it was beautiful. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm asking you, if I was to die today, if okay. I was to die today. You think I would get? <laughs> no mystery, no mystery. Do you get exactly? Sometimes you think, well, I'll die, I go to heaven. I'll die, I go to hell. I'll die, I get reborn as this, or is it so simple? It's like for me walking out of this room into the other room. You're not going to get anything magical. You're going to get exactly what you are now, just in a different body. Like, you're not going anywhere except, like, you got a material desire? Well, you then get rid of it. It's going to be with you in your next body. Or um, you gotta, you've got some unfinished business or you've got some disturbed mind. That's not going anywhere. You're just taking that. To, it's just a change of your physical body. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, I'm hoping to get some like magical, you know, slingshot from Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna. <laughs> I went to a holy place, so now I'm going to be launched into some higher planetary system. Or is it literally, you're going to get exactly what you're, it's just like if you were to live and die today and, uh, or go to sleep today and wake up tomorrow, or like you took a nap. Do you think there's some slingshot upward for things we've done in this life? Or do you think, no, you, you've got what you're going to get in this with if you didn't change your body well i'm you hoping know. for a slingshot <laughs> but I'm, I'm realizing like no you're, you're getting your karma right now if you don't feel like you're, you're spiritual that's because your work yesterday wasn't spiritual enough well i think there's both answers are possible um first there's just you get what you got right you get what you get and you don't be upset. Is get that upset. what you say to your kids? Get what you get, you don't get upset. But there is a slingshot too. But but let's just start with just the beginning, right? Like, what happens when you die? How do you take your next body? Bhagavad Gita talks about that, right? Yeah. You know the verse. Verse. Let's hear it, Raghu. Sixth chapter. No. Give me a hint. What chapter? Eighth chapter, which is all about you know death and, and so on. I don't know. I don't Yum. Know. Yum yum bapi smaram bavam tiajanti anti kalevaram. Yeah, tam tam evaiti kaunteya sada tad bhava bhavitaha. So um, it's, it's talking about it's the, you, yum yum bapi smaran bhavam, right? Whatever you know, you smaran, you remember that bhavam, that nature, 
you know, you take into the next life. You know, it, 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 the translation is whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, mm. O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Mm. Okay, so you, you hear that and you say, well, that's whatever, whatever my, wherever my mind is at when I die at that moment that's going to ter- determine my next body that sound when you hear that it sounds like it's almost like well boy that any random thing could pop up there is it is it just like you might just get lucky or you might just get unlucky or is depending it just on a practice of the things yeah. that you naturally think about on a regular basis yeah you know well that that's that's the thing like we could say your state of mind determines your next birth right so now let's go back to the computer analogy, right? If the mind is a computer, then what's on your mind at the moment is what's on your screen. Right. But you also have the, the hard drive too. So you could say your state of mind means the state of your entire computer, or you could say that it means what's on your screen at that moment. Mm. Now from this verse, it seems like Krishna's saying it's what's on your screen at that moment, right? Because he's not just saying state of mind, but he's saying you're smart and what you remember at the time of death. When, when what is it? Um, when chajajante kalevaram, when you give up the body, at that moment, what smart and what you're remembering is going to determine the state of being in your next birth. But the fact is, is so, so, so <laughs> therefore what the yogi's doing, what the yogi's doing is he's trying to take every file on that computer and he's trying to program it in such a way where it is connected to god all right then no matter what file comes up whatever is going to come up on my screen at screen at any moment is going to be in relation to god right so like in other words there's a file in me that is like related to my family all right there's a file in me that's i mean many files right many folder there's a folder that says my body and within that there's like tons of files that have to do with the way i think of my body and and so on and there's a there's a folder for my family and then within that folder there may be subfolders about each member and then there's gonna be files in there about how i feel about them how i see them how i identify with them and so on and through the process of hearing right we, we become informed and how to see each one of those files in relation to Krishna, in relation to God, right? But Krishna is going to tell Arjuna, you know, Arjuna is going to say, how do I think of you? How do I always think of you? And Krishna is going to say, when you see the sun, you think of me. Okay, right. I already got the sun file in my mind. Now, what you're telling me to do is kind of rewrite that file so that when I see the sun, I think of you, right? Moon file. I need to reprogram that so that when I think of the moon, I think of, Krishna. And then no matter what file comes up, you know, at the time of death, it's related to God. Right. And and naturally I'll be, you know, when we like say time of death can be a time of fear, you know, there's a files that are related to fear, but all our fear files are written up like in relation to Krishna. And so when the moment of death comes, Th- those files rise t- to the screen, you know. I I, I had a um, you know what I did yesterday, right now? What? Went to the beach. Right. Oh, the New York City beach! How charming! <laughs> See, there you go with your negativity. <laughs> but for me, it was a very positive experience, right? <laughs> New Yorkers, and, and, it's sort of like if a New Yorker has like a window in their apartment, they're like, look what we have, a window. And if they have like a patch yeah. of grass, I've got a backyard. It's like, it's like they've just like lowered the bar of sensual enjoyment so low that anything. Oh well, my you God. see, this is the point, Raghunath. It wasn't about sensual enjoyment, you see? <laughs> and and, I'll, and I'll, I mean that honestly because I, I, it's a fact when we think of beach, we think of sensual enjoyment, but to, I'll be honest, for me, it's, it's, it's shifted, you know, to being about like healing, right? When I go to that beach, I'm, there's really like, I mean, yeah, it's enjoyable, you know, and it's enjoyable to go in the water and cool off, but 
it's not like, you know, people are going there to enjoy and they're, you know, doing whatever they do. But for me, it's really what it's all about, because like, you know, I live in a, in an atmosphere that's, um, that, that's, uh, in, in many ways, like for the whole, um, nervous system and all that is, is, is difficult, right? Crowded, yeah. you know, polluted so much time on the computer, you know, all this stuff, you know, that when I go to that beach and I lie on that sand, like right in the earth, all the elements, earth, or ocean, you wind. You the converted, we get it. Sun. We live it. I'm, I'm with Jeff Eisenberg, he's on the then, beach then, every day then, doing kirtan. Then why did you immediately talk about material enjoyment when I brought up the beach? I, not in material enjoyment, I'm just saying it, it's, it's, just, it's New York City material enjoyment. It's like, it's just- But it wasn't material, that's my point. It was, I wasn't well, there for material it's enjoyment. Sattvic, it's, 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 you're right, it's sattvic, nice <laughs> enjoyment. It, it, it's sattvic, good. Why well, you keep saying enjoyment? Good, wholesome enjoyment, I get that. But it's still <laughs> like connected. <laughs> you go to the beach in New, New York, you got tens of thousands of other people packed on that beach and God knows what they're dumping. I mean, you got how many, nine million people living in New York City? God knows what's in that water. No, they, they test the water, it's not so bad. And so, but this is, try, try to hear me out. Okay. So, 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 um, so I'm lying there on that beach. I'm like 15 feet away from the ocean, the waves, you know, I go into the ocean, right? Then I come out, I'm lying down on the beach. The waves are just like, they're washing back and forth. There's power in that ocean, right? Healing power, right? You're laughing at me. Then, then, then I, you know, I look up at the sky right now it's a fact you don't get to see the sky so well in new york city right there's always a building blocking it and, and, and so because the bright lights you can't see it. yeah but when you're at the beach you get the whole vista right yeah you're seeing that whole sky and there's clouds these massive beautiful clouds and the sun is like kind of like coming through those clouds so and the and the, you're getting from that vitamin d from that you know um from from that sunlight and and, and from that breeze you're feeling the prana coming from the ocean coming from the earth coming from the breeze it's really, you know, it's like I'm lying there and I'm to my, to my, you know, measly level, I'm feeling Krishna in all these different elements, right? I'm feeling, I'm feeling God in all these different elements, hmm. right? Um, and it's really satisfying. You know, it's really, it, it's, it's, it's very sad. Like if we hear Bhagavatam daily, we can go to the beach and not be thinking about enjoyment, like, oh, this is a party. But actually, you're seeing God in connection to, to it all. Uh, and, and the deeper our devotion goes, the, the more profound and complete that experience becomes. And then, you're, and then you, be, and through that, you become God conscious, you become Krishna conscious, right? Now, now let's, let's hang on to that. Oh, so we, you were talking about like what pops up in your mind at the time of death. My point yeah. is, one person is sitting on the beach and thinking, oh, the sun is going to tan me so that I'm sexier. And, and, and one person's thinking, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, there's so many um, attractive people out here that I would like to connect with for the purpose of enjoyment. And another person is thinking, oh, man, I just want to get away from whatever the hell it is. And I'm just trying to escape the pain of whatever. And people are, are, are there on different states of consciousness. But if we're hearing every day, if we're hearing Bhagavatam every day, Bhagavad Gita every day, and so on, then when we're in, in, in any atmosphere, but here's like one in particular, we're, we're, it's actually all stimulus for remembering God. Mm. And, that's how, and that's yoga, right? So at the end of the sixth chapter where Arjuna is saying, Krishna, I don't think I could practice Ashtanga yoga. It sounds too hard to control the mind. And then Krishna says, that's okay. One who's always thinking of me within is the highest yogi of all. That leads into the seventh chapter where Krishna says, see me in the sun, see me in the moon, see me in the taste of water, see me in this, see me in that, see me in all these different things. He's prescribing how we can practice yoga on the highest level by connecting every file on that computer with him, right? So, so you're asking when, when, when one dies, you know, what happens? And, and Krishna's saying that whatever you remember at the time of death, that's going to, you're going to get just like, you know, you get a glove is designed to fit the hand. The next body is designed to fit your state of consciousness, that accumulation of everything that's on your, and, and here's in particularly what rises to the screen in that moment. 
but how we live is going to determine what's on our hard drive and what rises to our screen at that moment of death. Right. And yeah. so if we're hearing I'm bottle time every I'm day, to, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to think like, well, is it really that a much of a mystical thing? What you're thinking at the time of death, just like sometimes you can go to bed angry. Um, but you wake up and you realize I just had to sleep through that. I'm not that angry. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm over it. Um, that's just like, that's our spirit soul's existence within this body and mind. Is it the same type of thing when you actually leave, leave your body? Is it not such a mystical thing? It's exactly what you had yesterday, but in a new b body where I'm sort of an illusion and think I'm a woman now, or I think I'm a dog, a dog now, or something like that. We, we, we or do I get some like slingshot for bathing in the Ganges so many times? That's what I'm asking. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, get to the slingshot. slingshot north. I'm gonna, or, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the slingshot. Um, but um, but before we do, just sticking with the you know you get what you get kind of level, right? So the the, the practice of yoga, the practice of bhakti in particular is a practice of harmonizing the mind with the nature of the soul or connecting everything, every file in the computer of the mind with God so that no matter what's rising up at that time, it's going to be, but it's going to be connected. Mm. And, but we die in different ways, right? Sometimes we die like we have a long buildup to it and in a, in a time of preparation. Right. And sometimes it happens suddenly. Right. Uh, so, so we're trying to live in such a way where that our mind is always absorbed in God, you know, and that, and that when we're put under pressure, sometimes we're put under pressure. And then we have a few moments before we die. Right. And are we going to be strong? Or are we going to be weak in, in that moment? Are we going to be fearful? Are, are we going to be weak? Is our mind going to run to something in the past that, that, that the mind is most attached to? Is our mind going to just be absorbed in fear in that moment? Or will the mind, even if, even if there's a, even if the external situation kind of like imposes fear will that fear manifest like krishna save me right so like if every file on that computer again is connected then wherever we turn is krishna's rising to the screen so that's there but then there's, there's the question of the slingshot and that's what we call mercy right prasad it's like krishna's mercy that 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 again, the next computer analogy is that we're in a virtual reality, but there's a programmer there. And the programmer is just like, he's saying, if you want to live, if you want to forget me, then you can have the illusion of the virtual reality. But if you're trying to remember me, I'm right here for you. And, I, and, and, and even your attempts um, are illustrating to me that, um, you, that, that you're adopting the attitude meant for stepping out of the virtual reality. And so there's tremendous mercy that Krishna can give one. You know, Prabhupada used to say, just give this one life to Krishna and he'll take you back. He'll make up for everything that's, that you're missing, you know? Like, even if you're not there yet, you know, he'll, what, what is it that he'll, he'll, um, he'll preserve what you have and he'll carry what you lack. When you try to connect directly with the, um, with the, the program or the virtual reality, even though we still have attachments, even though, you know, we, we, we're not, we don't have the full consciousness of the yogi. Krishna is ready to help. You know, and it'll, it'll slingshot you. There's always, there's always another factor. See, here's the deal. I try to live a life, a spiritual life, because I actually really enjoy spiritual life. I, I think it's, I, I like the culture. I like the philosophy. I like the lifestyle. I'm not doing it for a payoff when I die. I actually right. like it in the here and now. That being said, I'm thinking about the next life, mm -hmm. especially lately. I'm thinking about my next life. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, there, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the slingshot up, but it, it may, just may not happen. I might just get my life tomorrow. But then there's another factor. You can get the slingshot down. I might get a slingshot down. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, slingshot down next birth, Raghunov. Why would you get a slingshot down? down? Because you've been obtuse and short-sighted and arrogant and narcissistic, and you freaking, you know, you 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 dragged your foot on a great soul's foot one day by mistake, and you know you you've done something stupid so many times, and you you know you, you tortured it, it, an no, 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 magnifying no, 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 no. glass when you were six. You know what I mean? Whatever it is. You see, you see, for 
to answer that question, we have to look at the nature of Krishna. You know, you, you take uh, in the sixth chat in the sixth canto, we're going to read really important passage in the Bhagavatam, the story of a Jamil, right? Yep. Now, a Jamil was this person. He was raised a Brahmin, so he was raised kind of like with, if you want to say, like in a very religious, you know kind of background, like a very pious kind of background, you know, life is meant to be devoted to God and, you, you know, you're living kind of clean living and all that. But he let go of that life, right? He became attracted to a prostitute. Now he was married to a very nice woman, a pious woman, a good woman, right? But he left her for this prostitute. And he began and to, and to, 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 um, to like uh, afford that lifestyle with her. He began to live a, you know, a life of crime and, you know, just like a, he just went downhill. He went straight downhill, right? A couple bad, isn't it amazing? We are just like a couple bad choices from ruining <laughs> our life. Just like one or two bad choices to have a completely yeah. ruined life. That happens to people. So, so, so um, then he's an old man and uh, he's on his deathbed, but he had a young child and he named that child Narayan which is the name for God, right? The name of Lord Vishnu. Narayanam Namaskritya. There you go. <laughs> so he's about to die. He's feeling death coming on. And in that moment, what rises to the screen, right? In that moment, what, what, you know, there's all these files on his computer, but in that moment, what was most dear to him, you know, what he had the most emotional attachment to rose to the surface of the, of the screen. And that was his son. Narayan. And so he called out Narayan. Right? Now, as he's dying, it says that now, now this was interesting, right? Because months ago, right, when this whole corona thing started, we brought onto the show um uh Ganesham, right? right? Our friend Ganesham Das, who is just like a great guy. We got to bring him back on again. Yeah. And uh he 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 was a uh chaplain in New York Presbyterian Hospital. And, it, and at that point, the hospital was overrun with cases of COVID and he was um, um, counseling these people. And he said that many, that, that even not, he says that many people in that hospital and, and, the, and the people that have worked in that hospital for decades say that, oh yeah, people talk about these gr grotesque creatures that come to drag you out of your body at the time of death. M lots of people talk about seeing these people. So the Bhagavatam talks about them. It's all true. And um, they're <laughs> called the Yamadutas. They are the, the Dutas. The... I think we lost sound. Kastuba. I think we lost Kastuba. We lost Kastuba. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe I just lost Kastuba and everybody else can hear him. Should I just sit here and shut up? But it seems yeah. like everybody's lost Kastuba. Okay. I'm going to have to tell this story. The Yamadutas come and they take the soul of Ajamil. He's gone. He's disappeared. He's going to tune back in. Look for him in the waiting room. Margie. Yamadu does come and they take the soul of Ajamil or attempt to take the soul. And then all of a sudden, uh, the Vishnu dude has come because he's calling the name of Narayan. Hey, I'm, I'm back, Rolo. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You talk, I, I was trying to fill in your, I was saying yeah. Vishnu dude has come because he's calling the name of Narayan. Okay, so that's my point, right? You see, the Yamadu has come, the, the, the servants of Yama, the god of death, the judge, right? It's not Krishna that's doing the judging. He's not interested in it. That Krishna's got a totally different. Krishna's soft natured. Krishna's sweet natured, right? He's, sweet -natured. Yeah. He's not interested in playing that role of the judge, right? And so, so, but the but Yama, that's his role. He's got to like you know, make the judgment. This is the karma that this person's supposed to get, and and determine what you know what comes next. So the Yama dude is they come when they're dragging a person down. They're grotesque. They're fearsome. 
and Yamaraj is, and, and Jamil has seen those Yamadudas coming after him. He's calling Narayan, but he's not meaning, he's not meaning to call Lord Vishnu. He's meaning to call his son. The, the, the big question is, it's a material attachment, Kostuba. Why does he get liberated by the Vishnu Dutas if he's right. just calling for his son? That's like me calling out for anything material at the time of death. My mind isn't meditating on Lord Vishnu. It's just calling out a name. So, well, you're giving the argument more or less what the, what the, the, the Yamadudas were saying. See, because the Yamadudas coming from- but... I tend to think like the Yamadudas think. <laughs> you got that Yamaduta thinking going on, but you got to come over to Vishnu Duta thinking. So the Vishnu Dutas came. Now the messengers of Lord Vishnu come, these like angelic beings, but they're more powerful than the, the Yamadudas, right? And the Yamadudas, they haven't seen these Vishnu Dutas, and, and, and they're kind of blown away by them. And they're saying, We've, we're doing the right thing. We, you know, this person's performed all this papam, all this sinful, you know, like all of this very degraded, active, gave up a good wife to live this degraded life, became a criminal, et cetera, et cetera. He deserves this, and actually it's what he needs. You know, this is what he's supposed to get. But the, but the Vishnu Dutas said, no, he called on the name of Narayan. So our master says that it doesn't matter how dented his can is. Mm. He's called his name, so he must respond. And that's the nature of Krishna. Krishna is like soft. Krishna is like kind. Krishna is just like ready to, 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 to reach out in a very merciful, very kind, very compassionate way. Um, even if you just shown a little, you know, um, desire to return, even if you are still caught up, you know, with this false identification and full of material desires, if you're trying, Krishna's going to give so much help. And so the, 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 the yeah, the Vishnu uh, Dudas come and they, 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 they take over. And then the yeah. Yamadudas got to go back to Yamaraj and they, try to explain what happened tell us what's going on here and then he he explains you know that merciful nature of lord vishnu and and so on so i don't see you getting sl sl slingshotted down roganath you're a person that's dedicating your life you know to try to serve krishna's going to protect those he, he 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 not only preserves what you have but he carries what you lack you know ajamil's got the backstory too and like we all have a backstory of how we're coming into our spiritual life and stuff like that. Ajamil had an incredible backstory of a very serious life. And our life is a very long, it's, it's a long um, journey. And it's out of this, there was a Kastuba in a previous life that wasn't called Kastuba. And there was a Mara in a previous life that wasn't called Mara. Who knows what Mara was in a previous life? Who knows? Who knows? What do you think she was? Let's find. <laughs> Maybe this weekend you should do a past life regression. <laughs> A this baby rhinoceros? Thing. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we have we have. It's so interesting to think of it like that. We're just coming in from some whole different package. Whew. Yeah. All right. What else we got? Do we even read the Bhagavatam today? Well, we read some commentary, but we oh, were yeah. going back. We weren't going forward. But you know, uh, Arvind's mentioned Krishna says that even if my devotee is in difficulty in, at at the last moment. You know, I'll come to his mind automatically. We, you know, the, the bhakti yogi, he's, his yoga isn't just the mechanical yoga. In other words, it's not like um, some of the, like for instance, Ashtanga yoga can almost be like, I am going to deal with my mind through these processes and on my own strength, I will conquer it. But the bhakti yogi is like, I'm just trying to prepare myself so that I will receive the mercy of Krishna, right? I'm trying to get rid of the arrogance in my life. I'm trying to let go of the attachments in my life. I'm trying to cultivate some humility in my life. I'm trying to move through this world in a gentle way and as far as possible, bring my mind to Krishna. And I'm weak at it. But I know that the nature of Krishna is that Krishna is merciful. Mm. And so I'm just trying to do everything I can not to block that mercy from coming through. There's mercy in Krishna's name. There's mercy in the Bhagavatam. There's mercy in the association with great souls. Let me, and this is why I, I, you know, so important what you emphasize all the time. Let me not criticize people. Let me very carefully not um, build walls between that mercy 
which has nothing to do with my own yogic strength, but is, you know, it's just about me becoming a little bit humble, um, not, and not getting caught up in, 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 uh, silly things, you know, uh, that, um, that are destructive to that, that, that get in the way of my receiving Krishna's kindness, Krishna's mercy, you know, and, and I have that faith that he's very kind and very merciful. And, um, and I think, uh, in the end, Raghunath, uh, your, your, your end will be a very auspicious one. I'm, I'm, oh, thank uh, you for that I, I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm by your blessing may, now. It's I not my blessing. I'm just, I'm just sizing it up. You know, I'm seeing here's a guy that, you know, wakes up early in the morning to, to bring his mind to Krishna. And then he spends, you know, another hour or so, you know, like, you know, in, in, a, in a sangha of beautiful people you know, reading Bhagavatam so they can bring his mind to Krishna. And then he goes about his day, you know, he does his puja so that he can bring it. You're, you're, you're illustrating in so many ways that this is your desire. This is what you want. Now, you and I, we both have minds that are programmed with all kinds of trash from the, from the past. You know, it goes way, 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 way back. But, you know, just like we saw in that verse, like Arjuna, by bringing his, his mind to Krishna, all the trash was removed. It took out all the trash, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think in those final moments, uh, Krishna is going to get rid of all the trash. What was it? Arjuna's co constant remembrance of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna rapidly increased his devotion. And as a result, all the trash in his thoughts subsided. The grateful community of wisdom of the sages. We're dependent on all of you. Bringing my mind. Don't, you guys are like the trash men, taking out the trash <laughs> of my mind. <laughs> Thank you, oh garbage people. <laughs> You are the uh, house cleaners, the brain washers, cleaning my brain. Thank you very much, for everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Coach Stuba.